السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا أما بعد My dear brothers and sisters, today we'll be talking about an important region a region that uh, in the eyes of outside observers is full of conflict, bloodshed and endless problems. When people talk about the Horn of Africa, the first thing that comes to their mind is the famine that killed millions of people, particularly in Ethiopia. And when people also remember about North Africa, first thing that comes to their mind is wars and conflict. But North Africa is more than that. It's a region that has a long history. It's a region that has a rich civilization and an important contribution to humanity. So I'll be trying to cover as much as possible and you can imagine in half an hour talking about a region as vast as the Horn of Africa would not be possible to, co to cover every area of the history of this region but I'll try to highlight some of the important aspects of the history of this region. Now there are four countries in the Horn of Africa, technically speaking. These four countries are, I will start with the largest one, and let me start by showing you the map, but basically as you can see, the Horn of Africa it looks like a horn, and, uh, and this is where you see it very closely. So there are four countries in the Horn of Africa. And they are Ethiopia, Somalia, Djibouti, and Eritrea. Let's start talking about the largest one among the four. The largest country in the Horn of Africa is Ethiopia. Ethiopia has more than 82 million. Uh, the, the population is more than 82 million. And ethnically, it's made up of many groups. The largest are known as the Amharas, the Oromo, the Tigray, and so on and so forth. But it's a country, you can imagine, more than 80 million. It's a mosaic of cultures, languages, and various ethnic communities. And also, it's a country that has various religious affiliations. Now, one thing I should mention here when it comes to statistics, in many African countries, the statistics are not fully accurate because of the religious and tribal rivalries, rivalry that exists, there is a lot of sensitivity when it comes to statistics. So sometimes the statistics are not exactly accurate, but they are as close as possible. So according to the official statistics, there are about 60% Christians more than 33% Muslims and the remainder are followers of old African religions. Now there are some who dis dispute this statistics and believe that Muslims in Ethiopia are more than 33%. Regardless, Muslims make a good percentage of the population in Ethiopia. Now, Ethiopia is unique among the African nations in a sense that it has never been under occupation except for four or five years. It was occupied by Mussolini, by the Italians, in 1936, and they 
occupied Ethiopia only for five years. In 1941, Ethiopia, uh, Italy was defeated and Ethiopia became an independent state. So Ethiopia historically is a unique country in Africa in the sense that it has been occupied only for a short period of time. And Ethiopia as a region is a very diverse region. It has uh, lowlands, deserts, areas that are densely uh, forest, uh, and it has uh, uh, some of the largest rivers in, in Africa, the Blue Nile. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a very diverse country. Uh, it produces coffee, one of the largest uh, ex exports uh, from Ethiopia is, is coffee. So it is one of the uh, largest and most significant countries in uh, the Horn of Africa. The next country in terms of size and population is Somalia. Somalia has a population close to 10 million. And Somalia is unique in a sense that it is almost 100% Muslims and Muslims belonging to the same school. And what's unique about Somalia in, uh, the, uh, in Africa is that it is ethnically, religiously, in every aspect you can think of, is, is almost, uh, uh, it, it doesn't have much uh, the diversity. Ethnically they are the same, uh, they speak the same language, they, they are almost Sunni Muslims. And you don't have that kind of uh, structure, social and religious structure, in many African countries. Somalia was partly occupied by England and partly occupied by Italy. And it became officially independent state in 1960. The third, uh, the third largest country in uh, the region is Eritrea. And Eritrea has a population of 5 million. And according to official estimate, uh, half of the population are Muslims and half of the population is Christian. And again, as, as I said, these are closed estimates. The country became independent in 1993. It was an Italian colony for 50 years. And then it was under the British rule for 10 years. And then, following the federation, it was part of Ethiopia until 1993. And then in 1993, it became an independent country. So these are the four main countries of the Horn of Africa. Ethiopia, the largest. Somalia, the next largest, followed by Eritrea. And the fourth one is Djibouti. Djibouti is the tiniest. It has only half a million population. It's an overwhelmingly uh, Muslim country, 94% and 6% Christians, possibly uh, some Indians or some uh, French or other foreigners who, who live in, in Djibouti. It became independent from France. It was occupied by France in 19. 77. So that's a quick, quick overview of these four main countries that make up the Horn of Africa. How did Islam reach the Horn of Africa? The first contact of Islam with the Horn of Africa was when a group of companions of the Prophet wasallam migrated to Abyssinia. As you know, in Mecca, Muslims were tortured and persecuted. And the Prophet wasallam told some of his companions to migrate to Abyssinia. And he said to them that in Abyssinia, there is a king under whose kingdom no one will be wrong. And this king is commonly known in Arabic as a Najashi. So there was a group smaller group that migrated first and then a larger group that migrated later
görüyorum.